Hello, folks, and welcome again to another YouTube show of the Hobo and His Girlfriend, that kind of wrestling show here on YouTube. Eventually, I'm going to have to figure out how to make this a podcast. Maybe that's where the money is. I don't know. But my name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is debating stuff. Um, it was Memorial Day. Or no, no. Labor Day. No, it's Labor Day because, again, I do love my girlfriend. She got me this. Shirt. So again, I like to wear things in memory of her, especially if, if she can't be here. She's here at least in spirit. Um, again, we had it was Labor Day. I hope everyone had a good, safe, fun Labor Day. Hope everyone still has their fingers. I don't know. That's the fourth of July. You have to worry about blowing fingers off. Um. Oh, special announcement! I just had my one hundredth show. Past weekend when I did my all in R R and R, which is my review, recap, and ratings. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I just had to think about that for a moment. I'm sorry. That was my one hundredth show. Yes. So that means Oh wow, I have a lot of stuff to do this week. Um Probably on Sunday, I'm going to post a bonus show where it's going to be the 100th show, 100th Hobo Breakfast Special, where I, Hobo Tom, am going to have a couple matches on WWE 2K17. Um, the three big matches. First match, we're going to have the Bestest Girlfriend Ever Championship, currently held by Miss Tether, and she's going to defend that belt against La Generica. The second one, Matt, we're going to have a new wrestler. You've seen him here on the show once. You're going to have El, El Vagabundo Dos Hobo Trace. Go against Diamondback Jack Maverick. I think that's just going to be a regular move. Again, any championship match, because my name is Hobo Tom, always a hobo death. So we might see La Generica pull out a flaming table or something. And unlike Triple Mania, there will be no production members helping either La Generica or Mistress Heather. Move tables, ladders, chairs, set things on fire. Um, then, for the new championship I just created, the always underweight championship, we're going to have He is Ty versus Crazy Liam. And then in the main event of the evening, it's a family feud, a civil war, the challenger, the creator of the Under the Bridge Championship, Hobo Tom, versus the reigning Grand Prix Undisputed Global Under the Bridge Championship holder. Aiden Awesome in a hell in a cell match. It's the only way the Under the Bridge should ever be defended. So we'll see what happens there. Again, I'm going to have that Sunday along with kind of how I make my special breakfast sausage sandwiches. Just kind of that little bonus. And stay tuned at the end of the show. There's going to be a bonus about how to make your own almost Chicago-style pizza. But let's talk about Raw. Raw was kind of fun. It was a nice escape from dealing with auto salespeople. My girlfriend is still looking for a car. So again, just so that she wasn't getting ripped off. Hobo Tom was there to set people straight. And let's start off again with Raw. Boom. Boo, Ohio State. Boo! Boo! 
Boo! I'll never cheer for anything at Ohio State. I bleed maize and blue. M go blue. We support you. Even though you lost in Notre Dame. But again, first of all, I will always boo OSU. And as we'll see later in the show, I, I cheer heels at that rundown OSU. But we start off with Braun, Drew, and Dolph. I mean, this was pretty good. And Renee Young is back at the commentary desk. I don't know if they're getting her ready for her role, probably, at the Women's Revolution, which is the October pay-per-view. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think next week's the go-home show for Hell in a Cell, because I want to say, why do I think Hell in a Cell is the 16th? Oh, also, another programming note. Probably... Um, Friday or Saturday? Um, well, s Friday, I'm going to the NXT show here in Daytona Beach at the Multicultural Center about... Geez, I think it's only like a 20-minute walk from my house. 20, 25-minute walk. It's like a 5-minute drive. So probably Saturday, I'll have some more NXT videos that I've been taking, along with a little bit of my commentary behind them. So that's one thing. I'm not too sure if I'll make it to the Dade City NXT on the 13th. And then maybe I'll make it to the Sanford NXT, which is the 21st. A lot of wrestling videos for everyone. Enjoy. But let's get back to Raw. So Braun, Drew, and Dolph are out there. They have a good, really good video mashup. I mean, obviously someone knows their production more than their hobo production, like I have. Drew's really good on the mic. All of a sudden, the shield come out to confront them from the audience, so they do their old shield entrance, which, which is okay. I understand it. JRO Hotel India Echo Lima Delta Shield. And then the entire locker room breaks out by the orders of Baron Corbin, and then it's just a schmozzy brawl. Ooh, I like that. And of course, at the end of this, people were sent off in a police van, also known as the Paddy Wagon. And I'll tell you why I'm doing the quote marks because of what happened in the show. But the first match of the evening, we have the returning Bella Twins versus the Riot Squad. And this time, the Riot Squad is represented by Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. So Ruby Riot is kind of on the outside. I think she's still somewhat recovering. I think she like had a knee sprain, or a really bad knee sprain. Not so much a torn ligament, but you just kind of stress and strain. And they, they have a pretty rigorous schedule, so they do need some time off. Um, I'll say this much. The Bellas didn't have too much ring rust. I mean, they do remember how to double team, which is good. Uh, and Nikki had had some good had some good moves. She had she had, she had some good spots. She actually had better spots than Bree did. And I'll get into that. Um, Bree gets a little bit emotional when, when Liv starts smacking her around, and then just shouts, "How is Barley doing? How, oh, how, how, how can she do it? How is Barley doing?" And with a blue tongue, it's just it's just semi comical. Again, you don't do that. Bad, bad live. It can happen now. Um, again, it was a good match. I mean, Liv Morgan's getting better. Sarah Logan's getting pretty good. She's also do that pop-up headbutt more. That's just vicious looking, especially because she's has Viking heritage. A Viking heritage who was raised by wolves and her uncle on a potato farm. Something like that. It gets too convoluted after a while. I think the only, thing, the only thing I know is that she's dating Ro. I think it's his last name from War Raiders or War Machine. So I, I still might get that Viking stuff. Not too good. Again, she really... She has a very pretty face. The thing is, she can't wear any like Viking makeup on the chin. 
just because of her facial structure, it makes it look like she has like a soul patch going. And soul patches on women are not attractive. That's my only complaint. Again, if you say that stuff, we can we can feel free to leave a comment about that. Hobo Tom, you cannot say that about women. It's bad. I'm sure people have said worse. Meltzer! Oh, I had to sneeze for a second. I'm sorry. But Brie, it's not Brie mode. It's Brie botch. Because this match was actually, I mean, it was going well until Brie started to botch everything. And for that reason, I give it a ham sandwich. I mean, breathe. I mean, a suicide dive looks kind of easy. You just kind of have to suck it up. Kind of just jump through the ropes, which seems easier than jumping over the ropes, because you just have to just launch yourself versus actually jumping. So, and she botched one. Made it look terrible though. And I'll give Sarah Logan credit. I will give Sarah Logan a whole bunch of nonsense. I will also give credit where credit's due. She didn't oversell. In fact, I think her reaction was just kind of spot on. And it just like, when I think she saw that Brie wasn't going to hit, she just kind of like threw her arms down like, like, like she was going to throw her to the floor. So it worked. It made it somewhat believable. But Brie can't be doing that. And then she did that again. Again, they they sold it a, a little more. She was a little closer, but she can't be diving in the ring and just missing people. I understand they're they're there to catch her, but part of it's on her because she has to get to the point where she can be caught. If not, it's no bueno. You know, this was a ham sandwich match. Um, I'm not that excited about the Bella Twins coming back. I'm sure a lot of people have their own opinions about the Bellas. I think that's, I think they were one of the reasons why I stopped watching wrestling for a while. I mean, they had like the weird stuff going on between them and it's just, I mean, I guess when you get older, there's like turnoffs. I do appreciate when wrestlers do the blade job. Again, with Cody Rhodes from All In, that, that was really good. It was timely. It, it had a story. Again, watching New Jack get up people. Nah. Then Baron Corbin's on the phone with Stephanie. Again, Baron Corbin's not doing that, that much better a job than Kurt Angle was. And this led actually to a surprising match, or at least a surprising storyline, where you have Bob, Bobby Roode. Who's glorious? And Ch Chad Gable. I think that's right. It's Gable and Rude versus the Acolytes. I mean, the Acolytes still, they, they do classic tag team work. Again, they're, they're the tag team that's been around. And they pointed it out, too. Um, they kind of, he, uh, the Acolytes ran down both Rude, Rude Moore and Gable as. Two single people who can't cut in the single, so so oh you know you have to you know you have to team up. And at least it holds a good story. Um Gable just seemed to be bossing Root around, which could be a good interesting story if later on they get to the story where Root's like, No 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 no, you're not glorious. There's only one glorious person, and that's Bobby Rude. Not Chad Gable. So again, maybe Gable's going to try and steal some of Bobby's thunder. Hey, it would make a good storyline, and at least they're starting it off right, at least. I mean, Gable sells good stuff. Bobby Roode's classic. Bobby Roode can do anything with anyone, I think. I mean, this was actually a fun match. I was surprised. <laughs> I'm saying the Acolytes had a good, fun match. On Raw, that, that wasn't a comedy match. It's a cheeseburger match.
And this led to Elias. Again, Elias, he's, he, he does the perfect thing of building the crowd up. And then burns them down. And runs them down. He had the best line. He made a University of Michigan reference. where And, and he just ran down Ohio State. Elias, I walk with Elias. WWE stands for walk with Elias. Again, he runs down Ohio State. They're nothing but a bunch of liars. They don't know what they're doing. Ooh. Of course, says, I'd rather be a Wolverine. Yeah. Again, I like that. Gives me warm, fuzzy feelings in my heart somewhere. Whereas that, that's where my heart should be. And again, Alexa Bliss, who's actually from Columbus, comes out. The most smart runs down her hometown. Again, anyone who runs down Ohio State, smile and double thumbs up. Baby! Alexa Bliss! Baby! There we go. And this led to a match between Natalia versus Bliss. And again, this is a really good match. I mean, Natalia's been there long enough. She can't put on a bad match, I think. They might not be amazing matches, but they're really good. And Alexa Bliss is the same way. A very good classic match. Hard hitting. I mean, they had good spots. Alexa Bliss won with the arm break, arm breaker, or the arm bar of Ronda Rousey. Good stuff. And Alicia Fox. She was wearing like the Ohio State silver and gray. No, Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox, you must wear maize and blue. But again, it was good though. Again, Alicia Fox is just there to be tossed around, I think. Um, afterwards, Bliss, Ronda Rousey, tries to put her in the iron bar, tries to toss her around. Again, eventually Ronda Rousey, because she is Ronda Rousey, cleans house a little bit. Oh. And then I guess there's still, this is kind of secure month. T-shirts everywhere. So then there's the backstage promo between Dolph, Drew, and Braun Strowman with Corbin. And they demand competition. So, very simply, Drew and Dolph take matters into their own hands. They beat up the competition and take their place. They beat up the Revival. Revival don't get a tag team match. This will be interesting to see what happens. But then, of course, this, this led to the B-Team versus Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre for the tag team champions. Drew, Drew just cleans house. He just beats up people. Dolph is the one there to get beat up and to give Drew the hot tag. Again. Very good, though. The thing is, they have the B-team continuing their kind of storyline where they have their fluky parts. And again, they have their great tag team work. Curtis Axel still does the, the homages to his father. Um, the perfect plex. The kind of somersault snapmare. And it was really fun. I mean, Bo Dallas can do good work. I mean, it was fun. Bo Dallas can have a comeback. But... It wasn't enough. There's new tag team champions, which is going to be good because I'm going to mention this probably a little bit later, is that maybe we'll have a whole champion faction, a really champ, a, the monster faction with, with Drew being kind of like the mouthpiece for both Drew and Braun. Ooh, indeed. And that was a fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. Then you have the Authors of Pain and Drake Maverick versus Jobbers. Any squash match is going to be a ham sandwich. Generally, I give squash matches unless something's really good, like a can of soup, because, yeah, they're Jobbers. We know, we know what's going to happen already. But Drake Maverick comes out as the Authors of Pain new manager. I wonder if he'll still be the general manager for 205 Live. 
Ooh, not think of that. But you know what? Maybe it's because <laughs> I can't even say this with a straight face. I, I've used this line too often. But you know what? Drake Maverick has the algorithm for tag team success. Again, I was happy. I gave it a ham sandwich. Mainly because I was thinking that Drake Maverick has the algorithm. And they finished off with a super collider. So, so it was fun. It is what it was. Then there's a promo for the Undertaker Triple Eight match. Um. You have another promo between the Bells and Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey is just making friends in the Bellas. You're not training with the Bellas. Training with the Bellas, your skills. But again, that's my personal opinion. And then you have the uh, uh, promo for the Triple H Undertaker at the Australia show. Um, HBK shows up. Again, kind of runs down the Undertaker. Undertaker shows up. And he shows, he makes Shawn Michaels feel fear. It was okay. It was a promo. It was the what it was. Then you have Sasha and Bailey, who are wearing match gear now. So that's probably a tease to probably the Evolution, Evolution Women's Tag Team Champions or a new belt, which should probably be cross promotion. Maybe even Xanax. That'd be good. Versus Dana Brooke and Ember Moon. I mean, it was okay. It wasn't anything inspiring. It seems to be really quick to me. I mean, I think I... I'm to go get a soda drink. And I turn around I'm like, oh, that happened? I mean, Ember Moon's still really good. Dana Brooke's good. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with her. Uh, Dana Brooke eats the pen on a roll up. Yeah, if I was getting booked to be pinned by a roll up all the time, I'd probably want to quit Titus Worldwide too. There's a tease behind that, so we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, Titus Worldwide, I guess, has run its course. It still, it's pretty good. Then you have a Ginger and Lashley promo in the middle of the ring, where Lashley is trying to be. Shanti. Shanti. And find inner peace because he's a little bit too aggressive. Kevin Owens then comes out and just beats up Lashley. And this makes sense a little bit. Even though Kevin Owens quit, he did cut a promo. I've been ruined by everyone. Does this monster Lashley beat up my friend? Well, he didn't use Lashley. He said that this bully beat up my, my best friend, Sami Zayn, and now he's out and I'm stuck here by myself. That makes sense. And then you have the main event, which is Finn Balor versus Braun Strowman, because Baron Corbin to take care of matters. And it was a fun, good match. I mean, it really did show a clash of styles. And this was really a cheeseburger match. And it wasn't bad. I mean, we've seen Finn versus Braun before, so it's all, all the things. Again, Finn tries to outquick him, out finesse him. Because he, the first thing he did was try and stop on his foot. No, and then he realized that that's not going to work. Um, Braun, whenever he could get a hold of Finn, would toss him around. Finn did have Braun scouted. Um, when Braun does the run around the ring thing and takes him out, he did a sling blade. Um, some other move. Again, Finn caught him in the counter. It shows Finn watches tape. Hey, this could actually be almost a real event. Um, again, bronze just just too powerful. Get some in a power slam. And the dolphin Drew come in. This starts to want to beat up even more. I think they try to power slam Finn onto the steps outside, and all of a sudden. Police wagon pulls up, and guess who's driving it? Not the police, folks. 
The paddy wagon shows up with Roman Reigns at the wheel, opens up the door. The other two members of the Shield come out, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. And literally the whole locker room comes out and just, or the whole heel locker room comes out and just beats them up. I think even Mike Knells came out to, to, to beat them up. Um, Roman Reigns just got beat up on the outside, got a power slam on the mats on the outside. I think they put Dean through a table. And they threw Seth, in, <laughs> unfortunately, into the into the paddy wagon. The glass shattered and cut his arm. So this is probably a surface scratch. It's probably nothing that deep. And I'm like, whoa, there's blood? It's rare, especially if you're not supposed to bleed. And stuff not like that. Again, that was raw. That was a kind of good show. Um, next week, I, th I think it's the go-home show. To Hell in a Cell. Remember, programming notes. I'm kind of stuck a little bit behind the eight ball. I have to kind of go to YouTube and other means to watch my wrestling. So probably Tuesday night, I'll probably get a normal SmackDown video set. So that's there by Wednesday. Probably Friday-ish. Actually, probably Friday, Friday or Saturday. Probably Saturday will be my Lucha Underground. Maybe Sunday. Uh, Saturday, I definitely want to get my NXT show up that I'm going to here in Daytona Beach. And also on Sunday. Gee, I have lots to do on Sunday. I hope I don't work. I haven't had a weekend off in a while. But... And then Sunday will be the 100th video special, which was actually Saturday. And a bonus for this video, how to make your own Chicago-style pizza. Everyone have a good night. I hope everyone had a good, fun, safe Labor Day. Bye. Love you, sweetie. Hello, folks, and welcome again to another YouTube show of the Hobo and His Girlfriend. That kind of wrestling show here on YouTube. Eventually, I'm going to have to figure out how to make this a podcast. Maybe that's where the money is. I don't know. But my name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is debating stuff. Um, it was Memorial Day. Or no, no. Labor Day. No, it's Labor Day because, again, I do love my girlfriend. She got me this shirt. So, again... I like to wear things in memory of her, especially if, if she can't be here. She's here at least in spirit. Um, again, we had, it was Labor Day. I hope everyone had a good, safe, fun Labor Day. Hope everyone still has their fingers. I don't know, that's the fourth of July. You have to worry about blowing fingers off. Um, oh, special announcement. I just had my 100th show. Past weekend when I did my all in R R and R, which is my review, recap, and ratings. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I just had to think about that for a moment. I'm sorry. That was my one hundredth show. Yes. So that means Oh wow, I have a lot of stuff to do this week. Um Probably on Sunday, I'm going to post a bonus show where it's going to be the 100th show, 100th Hobo Breakfast Special, where I, Hobo Tom, am going to have a couple matches on WWE 2K17. Um, the three big matches. First match, we're going to have the Bestest Girlfriend Ever Championship, currently held by Mr. Tether, and she's going to defend that belt against La Generica. The second one, Matt, we're going to have a new wrestler. You've seen him here on the show once. You're going to have El, El Vagabundo Dos Hobo Trace. Welcome to the to Hobo Tom's cooking show. Woohoo! Well, the only reason I'm cooking is because tonight it's all in, 
and I feel like shitting myself, I'm gonna make a little pizza for myself. The first thing I did, because I forgot to do it before I left for work, I like sausage on my pizza, so I have some nice yummy Italian sausage. It's out here on the counter to thaw out. I have some diced tomatoes, bread, spicy little seasoned bread mix, yeast, and can't go wrong with again cheapo shredded cheese, but most importantly fresh mozzarella. So the first thing I start to do, you probably hear it in the background, is that you want to add about a, a cup of warm, or three quarters of a cup, I always add a little bit more, of warm water. So I, all I do, again, because I'm kind of a hobo, my one cup, warm water, of kind of just regular tap water. Put that into the big old mixing bowl. Again, it's kind of nice and warm. You don't want it hot, you don't want to kill the poor little yeast. Yeast are little critters. And you need the yeast to make the bread rise. And I think for the most part, this is going to be a kind of multi-stage part. Hopefully I don't cut my fingers off while I'm talking. Again, open up stuff. Open up stuff. Over said bowl with warm water. And yet, let the yeast bloom, ooh, bloom. And actually, just to quicken it a little bit, was this instant? Oh, this is perfect rice. It's getting kind of yeasty smelling already. And also, I always like to give it just a kind of gentle stir. Let the yeast spread out. Ooh, ye yeasty yeast. Yeasty yeast. Of course, over here I have the pizza pan. So again, these yeasts have to bloom. Again, if you read the directions, well, at three quarters of a cup, I add one cup. Then you add in the bread mix, stir. Yeah, that's not happening. That's going to be something different. Everything else is kind of the same. Face to the flour surface. Shape them ball. About two hours. So what will happen? I'll probably. So I'm going to let this kind of blow up. Let this kind of bloom a little bit, give it a nice good five minutes. The house is nice and warm, so it's probably about 80 to 82 in here. So, probably about, maybe give it an extra 10 minutes just to bloom. You can see kind of all that, that yummy yeast doing its magical work right now. Looks a lot different than it did when I first started. Again, we're going to let that bloom a little bit. Then we're going to add in the dough. And eventually, later tonight, I'm going to make a pizza. Chicago, well, somewhat Chicago style. I think people from Chicago aren't the brightest people in the world. For some reason, they put the sauce on top. I'm going to make it a little bit differently because I'm going to put a layer of cheese, a layer of, well, not sauce, but yummy diced tomatoes. So it's a little bit healthier for you. And on top of that, I'm going to put some mohu sausage. And then, of course, I have the fresh mozzarella. So we'll come back in a couple of minutes. Bye. Okay, welcome back. So we're going to do kind of a multi-step thing here. And here we see our yeast have bloomed. You have the blooming yeast. Again, you don't want to add salt. Oh, you don't want to do that either. But again, you don't want to add salt. That kills yeast. You can see nice, yummy, little yeasty stuff. Yeasty. Yeasties are good. Yeast make beer and bread. Yeast are yummy. Here, I'm just going to kind of open up. In the flour packet, very simply pour in bread mix because I want this to have a little bit of text, taste, and texture. Ooh, that smells good. Also, I forgot to add this in, but one of my key ingredients to anything. And let me get this. I like to add just a little olive oil, it gives it just a little bit more taste and flavor. I have to open this stuff up pretty decently. Right. 
Now like a little splash of olive oil in there. Makes things, gives to me a little bit more taste without killing yeast. And what I do, so I start off, I have an old plastic whisk. Kind of doesn't get as gunky. Just kind of whisk it up. You can kind of see. Good. Knock some of the bread out. Oh, that does smell amazing though. Then I just like to give it an initial mix. It's going to be really doughy and really hard to get off the whisk. You're going to get most of the dough off. You're always going to lose something. So you're either going to have Frankenstein hands or anything else. It doesn't really matter. You can wear gloves. You know what? If you wear gloves, just get in there. So what I will do though, I'm going to turn the water on first so I can wash up pretty quickly. Again, you just kind of want to spread that dough around. Supposed to knead into a nice ball. You know, it turns out it's good. Yeah, and if you have a power mixer with a bread hook, it's probably a lot better. But again, my name is Hobo Tom. Again, you kind of roll around. You can see it actually. The other thing I like about the olive oil is that it doesn't stick as much to the bowl. You get a fairly nice ball. And try and get as much as much off as I can on my thumbs. Again, you're not gonna get all of it off. Don't bother trying, that's why I have the water running. Let me wash up quickly. And now normally if you're just making bread, you'll let this sit really for about two hours. I'm gonna let it sit for about two hours anyway. So right now it's about 5.30. This will probably sit good. Well, I don't get back from the gym until about. I'll leave that water running too. Let's howl it. Again, if you're old, my favorite towel is my grandmother's towel. I think this towel is as old as I am. So we have our bread going. So I'm going to cover that up very quickly. Now the thing that I'm going to do, which is a little bit different, here we have said pizza pan. And what I've learned from working a variety of jobs is that you want to actually kind of grease up your pan so I have some margarine. Because, well, I try to eat somewhat healthy and I can't afford butter. Again, you just take a big old slathering butter especially around the edges though. If not, your pieces will stick to the edges and good luck getting that stuff off. Especially if the cheese caramelizes. Then we have the yeast already working, so I'm going to throw this out. Clean. And the next thing I'm going to do, I actually like my crust just a little bit seasoned. So here I have some ooh, Adia seasoning, a little garlic, some onion. And just kind of a little bit on the bottom side, just kind of shake it up. And then what I do, again I put some olive oil, kind of really the only use I use for olive oil. I actually just put it at the pan, and you have the butter, olive oil, kind of coat it all around, get a little bit on the edge, edge retention there, make sure you don't spill on the countertop or you're going to have a heck of a mess to clean up. You know, once it kind of spreads out, Especially nice and even along the base of the pan. That. Now some people say let the bread sit. Let the dough sit. I don't. Move that a little bit. Careful how to touch that. Try the pan. And begin to press it out. Knowing full well. 
in about two hours this should actually rise then you want to use the back of your knuckles and another weird trick I've learned pinkies and stuff damage it use the back of your hand it's a little bit better again the, the yeast are really alive so you're not really killing them with like just salt now you kind of have to use your hands to spread things out a little bit Then you get that up. You really want it to fill out as much as the pan. It is going to kind of contract a little bit. If some oil gets on top, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's going to be messy. I should have turned left this thing running. Again, you ask 100 pizza makers how they make pizza, you're going to get 100 different answers. This is kind of like a little hybrid version of what I picked up. When I went to college, I actually learned practical skills. I learned how to make pizza. I think for my last, my final year at college, I kind of worked in the coffee shop to help pay my way a little bit. So again, in doing that, I learned how to cook french fries. I was a stock person, dishwasher, pizza maker, fryer. Eventually, they taught me how to cook on the grill. And try not to use your fingertips too much, but use your hands. And you can kind of press it a little bit. Because this is a deep dish style pizza, we're not going to be too concerned about making a crust. Although just because I do want to let, let it to rise up a little bit. So here, you wash up a little bit. Shoot. Well, what I did, I forget if I did the recording or not. I know it was kind of blinking funny. Again, after I got the pizza, after I got the dough out, kind of greased up a pan. You can see some of the grease marks in it. And because this is going to be a pan pizza, well, a Chicago style pizza, you want to have that nice, thick, fluffy crust. Some olive oil. Again, there's some seasoning in there. Salt, garlic. Again, I have my olive oil. Sausage I'm going to grill later, right now. I could probably mug someone with this. I'll probably just let this sit out. Still good for a while, I'm just getting the ice off of it. Now I'm off to the gym. So, I hope I got most of this video. Maybe it was more than eight minutes, so that's, that's probably why. I know it clocks out after eight minutes. So I hope I got most of the video. Again, I'll show you guys how I then top my pizza, cook my pizza, eat my pizza, and talk about wrestling with the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, baby! Again, that's a good kick. Again, I like to put this in a nice little dark place. So, it's nice and warm in the oven. I just used the oven last night, ironically, for pizza. Again, a nice little dark place. It's going to be nice and safe in there while the yeast and its yeasty stuff. Again, very quick cleanup. Unless, unless you're a fat bastard rat slob. And then the garbage. I'll go in the garbage. And I'm heading off to the gym. Again, we'll get everything ready, and you'll see me back in a little bit. Bye, folks. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Hobo Cooking Show. I'm back from the gym. Fed the birds in. Oh, my. Oh, my, my. Oh, heck, yes. Look how much that dough, ro that dough rose. Now, because this is a pan pizza, I'm going to kind of pre-cook this a little bit. I'm not going to put any cheese on top because I don't want it to really soak down. I want it to have kind of a nice, see, it's kind of nice, firm, and squishy. So, again, oh, yeah. It's going to. This is actually the time you kind of build the crust a little bit. Again, you can see all the yummy juices come out. Kind of building that crust, pushing up against it. I'm kind of building that crust just a little bit more. And this is a kind of time to do that. And actually what I'm going to do, I should have done this first. Let me wash my hand a little bit. I like to pre-cook it a little bit, so set the bake. I always like to set around 400. Start on. I put this. We're gonna let this develop a little bit. Going to toast it off only because so it's a lot firmer base for the cheese and the sauce. And we'll be back. So again, I have the oven set. It's pre-warming. Going to stick it in. Go 
there goes the pizza, and we'll be back. Okay, so now that we've kind of partially cooked our, our dough, it's not fully cooked, I'm going to just take it out of the I'm going to let it rest a little bit. And you can see really what kind of happened to it. The, the good thing is, oh, look at that. That, that looks freaking good. It's still a little bit puffy, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to let that rest a little bit so we have our base crust ready. Now it's time for the sausage. Ooh, the sausage, sausage, sausage. And whenever I make sausage, or whenever I cook sausage, now it's still kind of cold, but it's kind of thought out a lot. Now, no matter what, remember basic food safety. Unless you're me, you can just leave it on the countertop. And whenever I cook sausage, I always like to score it. I kind of have the grill running a little bit. And once I score it, that knife goes away to be cleaned. And since I have my dough kind of done, we got again. We have this nice yummy dough getting ready for some yummy sausages. Yummy, yummy sausages this year. Let's go back out here to the grill. The cat's inside. That's good. I always wear my kind of flip flops. I go outside because I never know what critters lie in the grass and what's in the grass actually. So let's see here. Getting kind of an awkward, sh awkward shoot here. Why isn't my door open? Oh, there we go. Again, I already fired up the old grill. It's a nice, hot, almost 500 degree temperature. Again, super hot flames. These only take really 10 minutes. You can already hear it sizzle. Then you have the sausage on the grill. That'll take about 10 minutes. Again, I'm doing all this while trying to make a second video, so we're gonna have video in video really soon, let's see here. Yeah, I don't want to go show you guys the house necessarily. So you can just kind of see the floor and stuff. And so for who's that? That is the hobo's cat. The ever fuzzy hobo cat. And for, wait, what's this? This is a place we all remember. Hobo office, here we go. Wait, who's that? No worries, Brad. Nice, nice neck breaker delivered by Britt Baker. Ooh, Britt Baker, Britt Baker's good. Nice neck breaker. Up once again by oh, see, that's the thing about triple threats. So again, that was a little bit of all in Chicago. Oh, an unprettier. Wait a second, that's someone's finishing move. Two. Oh, foot on the ropes. This this match will still probably take a couple more minutes. So again, now that we've really have kind of the base done. Then we have the base of the pizza. Nice yummy pizza base. I'm going to start building the pizza a little bit. Let's see here. So, again, this is kind of a classic Chicago style pizza. Yeah, you can see almost everything there. First thing you always put on Chicago style pizza is cheese. I don't know why they do it, but because it is a Chicago style cheese. I'm gonna really just dump all this cheese on. I gotta get a bag out for garbage. One more minute. Ooh. Again, Chicago style kind of spreads everything out. A nice little crust. You do, you do want, I, I don't know. I am partial to crust. But again, I want to spread it out as much as I can. Then I think this is the first time I'm going to use my new can opener. And if it gets to the edge, it's fine. We have a nice, yummy crust line. And I'm not a fan of... Oh, wow, these are brown. I'm not a fan of using tomato sauce or pizza sauce. I like the real deal. Wow, that cut like butter. Again, I just like to drain this, drain all the fluid out. And you don't want to make it too watery. And the sausage still has probably a couple minutes to go. Drain, 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 drain. And for this, you can really use any tomatoes. I like to use, again, I like a little spice in my dishes. A little cheap old plastic fork. 
I just want to get the lid off. I don't feel like it more stuff. Then, you can use whatever kind of tomatoes you want. I like those with chilies. Again, classic. Chicago style. That on top. And I'm just going to let that sit for a little bit because I know I'm still waiting for sausage. So I have my tomatoes on top. But because I'm going to give it a little twist, we'll see what I do shortly. In fact, we're going to just go back outside. And we're going to see how those sausages are doing. Because I think there's still two and a half minutes left. Yes! So they probably still have, I think it was eight minutes. Still probably have about a good another eight minutes. I think you want to cook sausage really about 15 minutes at least. I mean, it all depends on your grill and temperature. It all depends on the temperature, I think. Again, you have your grill going at, wow, almost six, well above, oh wow. Look how good that sausage looks already, folks. Again, the sausage is just one of those things you definitely do want to cook fully through, we don't want it, no, well, it burns good, but, yeah, a nice fully cooked sausage, I don't know if you can see that because there's no light, so that sausage is really almost done, and pink sausage is not a good thing, so we're going to come back about a few more minutes, Bye. okay, so by now the sausage should be really done cooking for the most part, well, let's go back out here, I'm going to gather up the sausage, Again, if it's just a little bit undercooked, I mean, if it's like a little pinprick of pink in the middle, that's going to cook. Because I'm, remember, I'm going to slice it up. That's done. That's like 600 degrees. Look at that beautiful sausage. Oh, yeah. There's oozing, oozing deliciousness. See here. Let's turn this off. Yeah, no, always turn your gas off. Please don't start fires in neighborhoods. That's a bad thing, folks. Interesting. Again, I like to leave my grill open. Wait until it cools off again. Look at those yummy sausages. And all that yummy grease is coming out, so that means probably for the most part they're cooked. You know, door is so much better since I changed, put a different lock on. Mmm, any sausage. I'm not missing much as far as the wrestling goes. I will kind of update things on the wrestling. And if you were paying attention, I do apologize for that. So we have our pizza. Oh, yeah, it's already. So I'm going to restart the oven a little bit. Put it back. You can tell it's kind of really hot. Only because the some of the cheese has started to melt. I'm going to set it a little bit higher. I'm going to do that because I do like to... Make sure all the cheese has melted, and for some reason, whenever I've melted cheese on the bottom, it's always weird. Now, you can, there's probably 5,000 opinions about this, but i find a decent knife. Where is it? the heck did I put my flame knife? I have two flame knives? But I have two flame knives. It's probably in the dishwasher. Again, what I like to do, I just like to cut on an angle. And you can tell that sausage, oh wow, that's perfectly cooked. I might save that in for me for right now. Again, to cut on an angle so it's nice and long. Cut right through. And then you can tell there's, there's like the smallest amount of, I don't even call it pink. This looks super juicy, it's really good. Can I have the wrestling matches so I'm kind of like half paying attention to this, half paying attention to that. And remember, this is gonna cook again. So that's why I don't like to really overcook the sausage, although I'm, I'm gonna have probably a little, little taste of it though. My fat bastard. Honestly, AJ Styles calls Samojo a fat bastard on 
www. That would be freaking awesome. Again, really, it's hard to use the ends because they're kind of round and it's kind of uneven, so I like to kind of munch on the ends myself to figure out how to get this silly thing. Then I use a fork mainly just because it's hot and, ouch, that is hot. I'll have that end myself. Thank you. Oh, wow, that's good sausage, too. Again, kind of leave the end for me. I mean, I'm sure you can use any type of instrument to really cut this. And you try and get on, I got a little bit on an angle there before. You know, when you angle cut it, it just makes it longer and thinner. I have a couple pieces for the cook here, I think. I'm trying to do this a little bit quicker. And you know the sausage is done because it's cutting up really well and there's almost no pink. There's my pizza again. You see something this piece has melted a little bit, but not too much. Now I suggest just my pizza up a bit. To me, there's no such thing as too much cheese. And just to make it a little bit fancy, I'm gonna do all my good knives. Just to make it a little fancy, I would like to put some fresh mozzarella when I, whenever I make a pizza. I mean, this is totally optional. And people say, oh, it's not a true Chicago pizza. But you know what? It's my Chicago pizza. If you don't like cheese, you shouldn't be eating pizza. So again, nice big chunks top. So really you have a, like dual layer cheeses, which is really good. And remember, with this, you don't have to really cover the whole thing. It's actually a really soft mozzarella, so you only need really a quick couple cuts. You gotta be careful, don't cut your fingers off, folks. We have some nice big chunks of cheese there. Always wash your hands a little bit. Yeah, you know, as long as it's cooked food, it doesn't matter. I just do it because it kind of feels funky. Put that aside. Back in the oven goes really just for about 10 minutes. Ooh, I mean, it's fun. Pre cooking. Pizza's back in the oven for 10 minutes. Show you a quick shot of that. You know, that's not going to take long. Then we're going to go over here for the drinks counter. The drinky, drinky. Ooh. And for this, because it is, it is my weekend, woohoo! And a little special something something. We're going with a double vanilla soda. So here, notice we have our vanilla vodka, always good. We have our vanilla cream soda. I'm going to stop that right now. Get back again. Remember, this is because of the all-in at Chicago. So again, you can't have, you got to have some Chicago-style pizza. And if you're going to have mini soda, you, can have, you must have double cream soda. Then it is the weekend. Yes. 
Maybe a double cream soda. Your big frosty mug. I'm not too sure if YouTube will let me show that. You have just big chunks of ice. Only because, again, it is the monster mug. This does take a while. And you can get this ice cube tray really kind of anywhere. The liquor store, I think they charge a lot of money for it. I think I got this at Kirkland's. It was on clearance. Um, Kmart has, uh, well, Walmart has them. Super Target has them. It's kind of really anywhere. I think it's kind of that, that neat little thing. It's really hard to get out though. I'm surprised I haven't destroyed this yet. But I've used it only a few times, I think. Only when I get my really big sodas out. Yeah, that seems like a lot of work, but remember, if you only do this once a night, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I always get the last ice cube out and save that for the ready, because I might only really only have two mugs of this stuff. This one really that good, two, you can make it kind of strong, and well, three, I have to wake up in the morning. So it's definitely something you want to kind of temper yourself with to go back to work, to work in the morning. Yeah, just put the ice cube back in an ice cube bin. It's all good. I'll be filled up later. Now, generally, I know people say you should count, but with a mug this big, wow, those ice cubes are freaking huge now. Yeah, and you have vanilla vodka smear off. I think I got one that was on sale. You can kind of see it fill up a little bit. I don't like to go up past really that mark, especially if I know I have to. Wake up in the morning, so I have the vanilla vodka. And again, you have your double cream soda. You can use whatever brand. El Cheapo Walmart cream soda is good. Whatever supermarket you're by. And the cream soda is probably excellent. And there you have your double cream soda. Oh, so, so yummy and deliciousness. So vanilla. The vanilla goodness. So let's check on the pizza quickly. Again, because it was already pre-baked, you don't have to do too much to it. You just have to wait for that cheese to kind of melt. So it's probably be about 10 more minutes. So I'll pull the camera out when we're ready to eat. And I'll see you. Okay, now I'm back. Let's see, I want to finish cleaning up. Get ready for to plate. Throw out one thing. I need to make my thumbnail on the cream soda. Turn the oven off. I think my pizza just needed a few more minutes. Oh my gosh, that is a Chicago looking style pizza. If I've ever seen a Chicago style looking pizza. This is amazing, yes. A quick little oven shot. And you can see how all the cheese is melted. It's a nice crispy crust, good sausage. The bottom layer of cheese is melted perfectly. Sausage and mozzarella, oh my gosh, that's amazing looking. Um, so you're now for plating! Yes, yeah, because it's only so good. I don't know how this cuts. I wonder how I'm going to cut it. Um, I wonder if I can use a pizza cutter on it. Oh, oh, where, oh, where did my pizza cutter go? The pizza cutter, baby! The grand fun of a plumber, one! But yeah, in case you're really watching this video and like care about like what I do, um, right now I'm kind of in between videos because I am doing a live stream event for all in baby we are all in baby Let's see i wonder how this is gonna cut because this looks really darn freaking good oh my pizza cutter does make it see the, the thing i like about using whole tomatoes is that it makes things a little bit juicier Oh, that's good looking. Let's see. Let's get a, a pe proper pizza plate. Wow, that's steamy too. That's good looking. That's one good looking pizza, pizza baby. I think I'm going to need a good cutter for this. That's a serrated cutter. Again, nice little serrated cutter here. Oh wow, that looks freaking good. I'll have to show my coworkers at work. So listen, 
Let's watch these few videos. Ouch! Just watch these few videos, learn how to make some good food. Bring it to work for Christmas part for said Christmas party. Oh yeah. Bebe. Oh yeah, sausage bebe. Been talking like this. Only because the grandson of a plumber, Cody Rhodes, won the NWA championship, baby. I remember when I held that title and I'd have beat Rick Flair, Tom Anderson, Tully Blanchard, PF Michael Hayes, and six other guys. One match, two hour long in a steel cage, baby. And I probably don't know what I'm talking about, but hey, oh my god, that is super cheesy. You know, I thought this was colossal, but this is kind of good looking. So again, I'll take one final picture of this so I can post post it on YouTube. So I'm gonna have this, this, and one more beverage of choice, baby. Son of a plumber, baby. Grandson of a plumber, baby. One. Somewhere up in the great big beyond, Dusty Rhodes is smiling down at his prodigy, at his son, at the prodigy of his loin, the product of his loin, his prodigy, Cody Rhodes is making a name for himself without the WWF or WWE. I, I think, I know Dusty Rhodes wrestled in the WWF, he had the polka dots and the one manager, so, again, the grandson of a plumber one, baby. In Chicago. In the hometown of Colt Cabana. And CM Punk. That punk. So let's see here. That is a good money shot right there, folks. And thank you for watching, guys. Um, please leave comments, suggestions as to what to cook next. Okay, guys, take care. And don't forget to watch my 100th wrestling show coming up soon. I mean, you probably saw that already. You can, again, just watch that. See some of my creations. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You guys, have a good night and enjoy All In or enjoy All In on YouTube or watch wrestling. Bye.